So good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Joyce Ward, and I have the honor of serving as the director of the Office of Education at the USPTO. And I am super, super excited because we have people in person live in the Clara Barton Auditorium. And it's been a long time since we've been able to do in-person events with students and educators, which is what the office loves to do. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for coming out to be a part of this wonderful program and giving us an opportunity to spend um, the day with you and for giving us feedback on how USPTO uh, can better serve and equip, no pun intended, all of you um, with your intellectual property journey. Uh, today is really wonderful because not only do we have USPTO um, experts and people here to help you, but we also have representatives from a trusted partner of ours, and that's the Congressional App Challenge. The Congressional App Challenge has been going on since 2013. This is a program that all, just about every member of Congress is a part of. It is a program designed to encourage app development and computer science coding across the country. Every district that you can imagine is a part of this program. And we're super excited because today we have uh, district winners from past Congressional App Challenge competitions. The, uh, and you're going to hear more from that. You're going to hear from them shortly. I am actually going to bring up a young lady who participated this summer as part of the um, intellectual property skills program at the USPTO. This is a work based learning opportunity uh, to provide students with opportunities to learn while they earn at USPTO. Our partner on this wonderful program is the Urban Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization that is focused on youth development and youth employment. And so we are super honored and excited because Ms. Elvisa Ofora is um, a student who was a part of the program this summer, and she is going to serve as the moderator for the first panel today. But I wanna tell you a little bit about Elvisa. Elvisa is a recent graduate of Mount Vernon High School. Uh, she is going to be headed to Virginia Tech to the Honors College in the fall. She is interested in information technology and aspires to work for the Federal Bureau of Investigation one day. Now, of course, we are secretly hoping that we can lure her back to the USPTO, but we definitely will try to encourage her and help her along the way as well. So I'm going to invite um, Elvisa to come up. Um, and then you will hear more about uh, the USPTO and the Office of Education, but we're going to get started with our first panel. And welcome, Elvisa. Thank you so much for being here today. Hello, everyone. My name is Elvisa Ofori, and I'm an intern in the Office of Education under the Director of Education, Ms. Joyce Ward. Um, in the fall, I will be attending Virginia Tech to major in Business Information Technology and minor in Computer Science. I am greatly honored today to be granted the opportunity to moderate a panel discussion with the past Congressional App winners. Um, so please, with a round of applause, help me welcome, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name, um, Ram, virtually, Varun Shrivastava. Can we clap for them, please? And if you don't mind waving when I say your name, thank you. Um, also virtually, Shriya Narayanan. Abhishri Narayanan. And for our in-person in folks, we have Ram Reddy. Ramya Reddy, Reagan Duffy, and Michael Beauchamp. Now let's get started. Okay, so this question is for everyone, and I'm going to start with our virtual folks first. So Varun, can you please tell our audience a bit about you and your background and what made you participate in the Congressional App Challenge? Um, hello. Uh, my name is Lauren Shabasova. I'm uh, going to be a senior at uh, Redlands High School, and um, we, along with I, along with my um, my team, like who worked on the app, we are member 
we are members and I was the co-founder of a nonprofit foundation called STEM for All Foundation. And we've been working to improve STEM education for our local school district and even school districts um, beyond our community because we believe that STEM, the STEM education um, is a very important skill and can be very beneficial to students in their lives. And thank you so much for your innovation. Um, Shreya, can you tell us a bit about yourself? I'm Shreya Narayanan. I'm a rising senior for Red at Redlands High School. I'm also an author of four books as well. Um, I've won, I'm the vice president of the nonprofit organization STEM for All. And I thought that it was by do by doing different activities with STEM for All, for example, we do coding workshops with the district. We're trying to improve STEM education in general for everyone. And so with the Congressional App Challenge, we found it as me and my team, we found it as like another thing we could do to maybe improve STEM. And so that's how I came to this. Thank you so much. Now, Bishri. Hello, my name is Abishri Narayanan, and I'm a sophomore at Redlands High School. And I was interested in this Congressional App Challenge along with my team because we like we wanted to help improve STEM as well, like what Shreya said earlier. And it was just like I was already interested in coding and computer science. So this further um, made me like want to do it more. And so, yeah. Thank you so much. And up next, we have Rom. Uh, <clears throat> hello, my name is Rom Reddy. And I'm also a rising senior at Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. And currently, I'm uh, mentoring in a, uh, in a <clears throat> Dartmouth internship. And uh, the reason that I've done the Congressional App Challenge was because I was really interested in helping the community. And that's why we created the app Lifecycle, which helps people figure out where they can actually um, recycle certain recyclable materials. Thank you. And now we have Michael. Hello. I'm Michael Beauchamp. I'm a rising senior at Catholic High School. Uh, me and Reagan are, became friends, and we were in a computer science and cyber literacy course. We learned several uh, cyber security skills that we wanted to share with youth from the elementary to middle school range. And we got the interest of sharing this from news articles and regarding cybersecurity attacks. For instance, last year, the pipeline crisis with ransomware. Thank you so much. Now we have Reagan. Hi, I'm Reagan. I am also go to Catholic High School in Virginia Beach. Me and Michael did meet in high school. And in our cyber literacy class, that's where we learned about the Congressional App Challenge. And Michael's brothers have participated in this before, so we thought it'd be a good idea to do it. And along with the pipeline crisis, during this time, a lot of kids were online at home during COVID, and we thought our app could be a good way for kids to learn basic cybersecurity practices so they could avoid vulnerabilities. Thank you so much. All right. It's great hearing about you all. So now let's proceed to our next question. And this question is specifically for the We Connect team, our virtual folks, consisting of Varun, Shri, and Abishri. So... While working on the We Connect app, were there any challenges that came about and how were they overcome? Um, yeah, so there are obviously going to be roadblocks when developing anything. I'm pretty sure anyone who's worked on a project will know just the hours of debugging the minor thing. But um, one of our main goals was to make the app as accessible as possible. So we had to make sure it worked for both um, mobile operating systems. And the way we got around this was using uh, Flutter, a Google framework, which works for both iOS and Android to develop the WeConnect app. However, this was our first time ever using Flutter, and it also has a unique programming language called Dart. So that was where we had to spend a lot of time learning the language and the framework. And um, while it was a challenge, it did help. Once we learned it, it was very easy to move on from there. Thank you so much. Does any team member have anything to add on to that? No, he summarized it pretty well. <laughs> Thank you so much. And for our in-person folks, our life cycle team, this is of Ram and Reddy. I'm sorry, Ram and Ramya. Uh, so we faced a lot of 
uh, problems in the integration. And I think a lot of people who work with like a lot of different like sub teams, like working with different parts, also face this issue. Like in the end, like nothing works together. But then as you slowly get everything to work together, um, it just kind of works. And yeah. Thank you, Ramya. You have anything to add? Uh, I guess to add on to that, uh, we were mostly developing it um, uh, for our junior year, so we never really had a chance to make up because they were also, you know, straight through COVID-19 um, guidelines. So we're developing this on um, all our in our own houses, so the plans are just to get it built to communicate and um, while we're always able to get over this, it was a little bit of a challenge. Thank you so much. And for our cyber adventure team, Reagan and Michael, do you have any challenges that you guys faced? We definitely had some challenges while the during the debugging phase, but after working together as a group, we found it to be a rewarding experience. And then similar to what Ramya said during the summer, it was hard like meeting up and uh, trying to work on the app together due to COVID, but also because of many summer activities. I understand. I kind of I could only imagine how tedious it could have been because, you know, it was during the pandemic. Also, as high schoolers who were involved in extracurricular activities like your time management, I really applaud it. So, yeah, Um now we move on, and this question is specifically for the lifecycle team, Ram and Ramya. So why did you both decide to create the application lifecycle? So the reason that the reason why we created the app lifecycle is because so um, we realized that not everyone knew where exactly to recycle certain materials like electronics, batteries, and uh, that's including us when we first started. And um and that's why we thought it was important to create an app that would help people know where exactly uh, that they can actually recycle those materials and also help make the process a little bit easier. And yeah, and that's what our app lifecycle does. So if you were to open it up and take a picture of some recycle material, and it'll then classify it and then show you where exactly you can recycle it and give a map and directions. Ram, you have anything to add? Um, no, I think Ram uh, summed up our thought process. Well, thank you so much. And folks, for all of you listening, if you need to know about how to um, recycle, where to recycle, what to recycle, please go ahead and download the Lifecycle app. Thank you. <laughs> and now... Um, so we move on. So this question is for all. And of course, we're going to start with our virtual team. Um, as a participant in the Congressional App Challenge, has it changed the way you look at your community? Um, yes, it has, because we've learned about the different problems that our community faces and how our community is very invested in addressing these problems. The different apps that applied to the challenge all address the different problems of the community. And do you mind giving specific examples of the problems that were being addressed? Um, so what we did was the WeConnect app, which was for like after COVID, everyone was kind of like distanced and we wanted to create um, an app where like everyone could join and like answer questions and talk to each other or advice. So that's one situation. Oh, that is so sweet. Thank you. And so um, for the cyber adventure team, has it changed the way you look at your community? Honestly, when we first started the app challenge, we saw it as an opportunity to uh, develop our programming. Right. But as we continued through the pro uh, process while working with middle schoolers and other schools, we realized what a large impact this had on our community. Thank you. What about you, Reagan? You have anything to add? I think he summed it up pretty well, but I just think overall it was really cool seeing how our app like really touched our community because a lot of what we touched on, they just maybe had forgotten, but it was like a good reminder for them. Okay, thank you. And by the way, um, do you guys mind saying where your apps are available? Like, yeah. Our app is available on Scratch on their website. Okay. What about the Lifecycle team? Our app is available on GitHub where you can download the code. Uh, we didn't get it on the app store yet, but we do plan on eventually doing that. <laughs> what about the WeConnect team? 
Yeah, so we're in a similar spot where we're still going through the process of approving the app, but we do plan to have it on the app store soon. Thank you. Do you guys ever want to go on Shark Tank or no? <laughs> Would you? Yes or no? Um, probably not, because I feel like this the main purpose of our app is to help the community. So I wouldn't say like we'd like to monetize it in any way. Like it's mainly to help the community. I don't want it to specifically be, you know, some way to benefit. Them. Wow. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Well, yeah, please. Let's applaud that. Anybody else here? Shark Tank, yes, or Shark Tank, no? Uh, no, because we're looking more to educate our communities to make them more safe online rather than making a profit out of this. Okay, thank you so much. Wow. What about our life cycle team? Um, also, obviously, uh, we made the app to help the people, our environment, see right to monetize something like that. Also, I'm not sure if I want to. <laughs> Well, shall we please give them a round of applause for being such innovators? Okay, moving on. So I'm going to start with the cyber adventure team. Um, what advice would you give our audience today on how to come up with ideas for the application for the challenge? So like briefly sum up the limits to creative freedom and how you guys ex basically expanded your innovation. I'd say the best advice is to choose a topic you're passionate about because as you're making this app, obviously we all know you're going to debug a lot. And if you're sitting there debugging something and it's a topic you don't really know much about or you just like don't like it, it's going to be harder and you're going to want to like give up after a certain point. Thank you so much. I'd say the best advice that we can give is to look at your news because that's a great resource for identifying prevalent issues in your community, which you can then use your own solutions to may possibly make it even better. Thank you. For our life cycle team. Yeah, so what we did was we originally tried to brainstorm it in like one session. Yeah, that didn't work out. We didn't get any ideas. So what we did instead was that um, we spent like a month just like going like in our everyday lives and then noting down some problems. And then we came back after that month and then chose something that we all agreed on would be good. And that was basically our thought process in that. Thank you. Robbie, you have anything to add? Um, I'd also like to add that rather than worrying about things on a national scale, it would be better to just like look at local issues um, and then that issue. A lot of the time, the issues we face in the community are also. Thank you. What about our virtual folks? So what we did is, I think the best advice is to, yes, definitely get in a brainstorming session with your team members if you're working in a team, because everyone, we didn't realize how many different ideas we could come up with until we got into that, we met up in that room and we we're like, okay, what about this one? What about that one? And so I think it's important to just Try to find a creative way to combine all of those ideas and make sure it's definitely something you like. And it's also something that maybe a challenge your community faces. It doesn't have to be. But if it is, it'll motivate you to continue to be like, OK, you know what? Maybe we can do something different. Maybe we can improve our community or something. So much. And also, um, do you guys have any generic advice for that are specific to the upcoming high schoolers in the room? Right now. I was going to say, if your school or if there's something nearby where you can get involved in computer science, I would say go for it since we live in a world and things are slowly but surely becoming more digitalized. So it's good to get those skills early if you can. Thank you so much. Anybody else have anything to add? Um, I guess I'd also say to be involved in community. so much and yes everyone involvement is necessary um okay proceeding to our next question have you all developed more applications or have updated your application since winning the congressional app challenge and we're going to begin with our virtual folks 
since the app, like since we created the app challenge, we were working on improving the UI, the design, the speed and the application, as well as like adding features to meet new people and track important threads. But we've not developed any new applications since then. Thank you so much for the life cycle team. Any new updates? Yeah, so uh, the past couple of months, I've done a lot of like computer vision and like artificial intelligence stuff. And most notably, um, um, like Rami and I are, are writing a paper on a uh, immune cell detection algorithm, which we plan on to do. And for as in like regarding the lifecycle app, uh, we're planning on to add on to the uh, recycle materials and also increasing the accuracy of the um, classification model that we're using. Thank you. For the Cyber Adventure team? Yes. After uh, winning the app challenge, I went on to volunteer and help middle school students to learn how to program and develop their own apps, where I further garnered feedback on how I can improve on the app and make it even better. Thank you. I had an opportunity this past school year to create an app that focuses on information on the solar system. And I think it could be implemented in middle schools because a lot of middle school curriculums focus on solar systems and astronomy. And it presents this information in a way different than just like opening a book and reading it. It's more interactive. Thank you so much. And for all the educators in here, if you need any new material about solar systems, your girl is right here. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to our next question. Um, of course, all of your interests are geared towards computer science. However, has participating in this congressional app challenge any way, um, any way, shape or form influenced or inspired what you want to study in college? And we can start with you, Reagan. I think for me and Michael, it hasn't changed what we necessarily want to study in college, but I ultimately think whatever we decide to do, we just want the opportunity to address more problems like this because seeing it within our own local community was really cool. And if we can continue to do that, that would be nice. Thank you. Yes, like Reagan was saying, we it hasn't really changed, but rather reinforced it. For when we're going into college, we're going to definitely look for the opportunities and venues where we're able to use our own ideas to solve real world issues. Thank you. What about the life cycle team? Oh, um, yeah, I had pretty much the same thoughts as Regan and Michael. And to add on, like, I got another interest of environmental science and how like computer science can really help in problems and regarding environmental science. Thank you so much. What about you, Ram? Yeah. Um, I guess so, uh, for the commercial app challenge, I guess I was like a little hesitant to pursue computer science in college because, you know, it's still high school and I still want to like learn a lot of different stuff. But afterwards, like seeing how computer science is going to like really be used to help people living. Um, it's definitely made me more interested in taking your science to any college, however that be. Thank you. For our virtual folks? Um, yeah, so I mean, prior to the Congressional Lab Trials, I already had an interest in computer science, but just seeing the multitude of applications like through this challenge, just um, you can see on the past winner's website, there are so many ways to apply computer science, and it's really just like inspired me to like pursue it further and make sure that whatever I can do is to help the community and also to push others to do it because I mean, computer science can be a scary topic to some, but it has so many applications that it can be used for that can benefit everyone. So I really hope that I can use it to help people and hopefully push more people to do it as well. Thank you so much. What about you, Shreya? Um, so I not necessarily mainly interested in computer science, although I do wish to probably minor in it. But I just realized through this app challenge as well that you can use computer science in so many different ways and not just in your computer science class at high school or something like that. And I realized that in whatever field we go into now, as the future becomes more digital, you're going to use computer science no matter what, like whether you're just in any different type of career. 
And so I'm definitely going to use it in the future in whatever field I go to. Thank you so much. Now, Bishri. So participating in the Congressional App Challenge has changed my view on what I want to study in college because before I wasn't exactly sure, but now it's like taught me the importance of coding and computer science and it's made me sure that I want to go through with this path and like do it for like a living. Thank you so much. And to all the educators, the parents, and all the children in here, I hope you guys are realizing and taking away the fact that being involved in challenges, especially specifically the Congressional App Challenge, or better yet, being involved in extracurricular activities um, can help solidify your interest and make it a potential career. And so um, moving on to our next question, and I call it the icing on the cake. Um, have you ever thought about the importance of an intellectual property for your application? And we're going to begin with the We Connect team. I mean, to develop, like in the development process, we made sure not to just like, you know, steal ideas or whatever. Like we used a lot of open source resources like the Flutter framework, uh, Firebase for our database. These were all widely available and publicly available. So there wasn't any, you know, stealing of code. But um, currently we're keeping our source code private just to secure our own intellectual property because I, because it, I feel like our idea could be used in more nefarious ways we do want to make sure that it's kept safe and better for the people and for ourselves so that you know we aren't hurting anybody okay thank you any team member have anything to add on to that um i think definitely yeah our app could be used in like just a multitude of different ways and so we're keeping it private for now but yeah we've definitely thought about its importance Thank you so much. For our life cycle team? I want patents. Well, I guess uh, people in their art project, since we, gave, we did implement an ML model for our app, um, publicly available data that's very important for us. Um, and, you know, we're also having our code publicly available for GitHub because, um, I mean, uh, well, it's obviously not ready for the app store test yet, but we want it to be available for people because um, it's this is so public. Thank you. Um, for the cyber adventure team. We believe that intellectual property is very important. However, for our uh, app, we use Scratch and open source in order to distribute it, as well as allowing other people to iterate the game design in order to if they wanted to add additional cybersecurity information in order to further youth learning. Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Reagan? Yeah, going off that, while our app is open source, we understand that intellectual property, for a lot of people's ideas, this is where they can get their livelihood. And if they don't handle it accordingly, then less ideas will be shared because they won't be able to make a profit off of them. Thank you so much. And if any of you guys ever later down the lane um, want any sort of IP protection, you're in the right place. This is a place for you. Okay. So finally, our last question. Um, what was the most fun for you during your process of developing the application? And we're going to begin with the Cyber Adventure team. So the most fun part was working with Michael. I personally think if I had done this challenge by myself, I would have been overwhelmed. And then during the debugging process, it can get very frustrating, but it was nice having a partner to sit down and talk about the process so we could keep, both keep level heads. And then every time we got through it, it was nice to celebrate with someone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, it was great working with Reagan. Also, not so much fun, but rather satisfying was seeing other people try out the app and realizing how much they enjoyed it and how much they learned from it. Okay, thank you so much. What about the life cycle team? Uh, for me, like the most difficult and fun part was actually um, um, doing the integration part. Like sometimes it's a nightmare, but like when you're with your friends, it's fun and then you can like get through it. And then once it actually works, you're just like, wow, it worked. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. What about you, Ramya? Yeah, that's um, fun challenging part was this integration process, like Mom said. Um, and I guess another part that was interesting was this um, for the initial app challenge, you also connected to the fixture app, um, which um, 
I contributed a lot to, and I'm like obviously a lot of my team spent a lot of time just like coding it. It was um, interesting to see how we could sell basically the app to other people and why this is Thank you. For the We Connect team? Um, I think one of the best and fun, exciting parts was realizing the day that we brainstormed the idea and then eventually seeing the day when we found when we saw our completed app and we went and worked through the whole thing that was extremely fun another thing was just throughout the whole process being able to like solve each problem created like that sense of accomplishment which kept motivating us to continue to keep moving forward and so each problem that we solved was almost in a way like a fun part Nice. Any other team member have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure like you can ask any of the other congressional app challenge participants. But just to build off what Shreya said, there's always going to be like little hiccups, little bugs, or even major ones. But every time you just overcome that, there's just like such a feeling of sat like satisfaction that like finally you got that problem accomplished. And I mean, just to point to like a previous example. So I recently uh, went to the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair, where I had developed an, an additional app um, that focused on where well, they used a machine learning model to predict the onset of depressive disorders. And through that, there was like the pro process of making the model, process of developing the app, and process of making sure all this is secure. So like every time there's a little hiccup, you're just like, there's such a rut, but every time you get out of that, you just feel so accomplished and I talked to people there at that competition from their international as well. Everyone had that same thing. Like you solve that one problem and you just feel so happy no matter how tough that uh, process might have been. Um, so thank you so much. And I hope to all the children, you all realize the importance of teamwork. So for all the activities that are in store for you, make new friends, connect with everybody else and solve them together. Um, and so at this moment, we would like to take questions from the audience. If you have any questions for our winners. Anybody? Yes, Ms. Christine. Uh, so did you do this independently or were you working with any um, adults in your school or teachers? Or did you have to reach out to anybody in your schools? Okay. And so she asked for our virtual um, folks, if you guys had worked on this independently or you had any outside help from teachers, um, companies, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll start. Um, so we didn't have um, like any teacher support or, or like we did not reach out to anyone. Uh, it was largely independent. There was like help with brainstorming and just um, giving out to teachers so that they could have their students help test it and make sure that it works and just get feedback, but this was process was largely independent. And I think that's the beauty of it, that you don't need, there's no really barrier of entry. If you have a computer, you can start. Right. And I want to ask, was that a rule to be independent or it was a choice to be independent? I do not believe it was a rule. Um, I, I mean, I don't think you can have like any other influence just like develop the app for you, but for ideas, I think it's, um, appropriate. Okay, thank you. Um, for our cyber adventure team. So our cyber literacy teacher, uh, she's over there, Mrs. Bochamp. Uh -huh. She helped us brainstorm the idea at first, but after that, me and Michael kind of just did our, did it everything else independently. Okay, nice. What about the life cycle team? Yeah, so for us, like it was pretty much entirely independent. Uh, of course, we did have some help with like how to do certain features with like documentation, but like yeah, we didn't really have any outside help. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? <laughs> Michael, I know you mentioned. Michael, you mentioned um, feedback. So um, can all the teams talk about um, how you collected feedback and how important or helpful or non-helpful the feedback was? The feedback was very helpful. The majority of it was extremely positive, which gave us a lot of encouragement. However, other feedback included like some 
uh, bugs that we didn't like realize along with other feedback, including like some background music, which we had never thought about, but it would have been more engaging. It was great ideas. Thank you. For the life cycle team? Honestly, let me say, um, since we were working on it mostly in the summer, there weren't, um, uh, we couldn't, like, even if you ask teachers and they don't have the time to, like, give us feedback. So, as I said, we were working on it independently. Um, so, we weren't able to get it from teachers. So, most of the feedback about the app mostly came from. Um, our parents or our friends who obviously didn't have the time to give their thoughts about the app. Um, and also, to be honest, we were like still working on it, even on the day it was just a turn <laughs> So there wasn't a lot of wiggle room on what we could change at that point. But like, given on this how long and um, how much time we spent on it, we just like did what we did, I guess. <laughs> Understood. Um, for the Week Connect team? Um, yeah, just to build off what Michael said, I would say that bug testing was a huge thing. I mean, obviously, they helped us get ideas, but bug testing, because you, whenever you're developing an app, you go in with like certain expectations of what the user will do and like what they will enter into like certain fields you have. We realized that, especially with like younger children, it will be their mission to find a way to break it. And then that gives you like a way to make sure you can you can avoid as many bugs as possible by letting other people test them. Right. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Oh yes, question. Um, yes. So, um, after this first uh, act, we all started a kind of a second brainstorming thing new. Has it got your wheels turning to start a second app of some sort at any time? Yes. We're going to start with Cyber Adventure Team. I think Michael and I would definitely be interested in creating a second app. I mean, this year is going to be busy, but I think if we have time, we'll definitely consider making another one. Is it going to be your senior year? Yes. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> um, for the life cycle team? Yeah, so it's like same thing for us. Like, if we have time, we'll do it. Like, it's senior year, and we have to do, like, college apps and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Um, for the Week Connect team? Um, I think for us, two of us are seniors, are going to be seniors, so it's definitely going to be a bit of a a rough time until October ish, November, December. But definitely, if we do have time, like the the rest of the other congressional app winners, um, we're, we'll probably definitely try to work on it. Yeah. Thank you. And I know Ramya, you said you were a sophomore, right? Or were you um, a I'm, senior too? I'm a rising senior too. Okay, sorry. Okay, never mind. So yeah, good luck in your senior year. Oh, sorry, Abishri. Yeah, it, I was a sophomore. Okay. So, yeah, would you ever consider creating a new app? Yeah, I would love to. I would want to do it with the team members I had this year, though. <laughs> well, good luck on um, your senior years. Um, any other questions? Questions over there? Well done, her question. Um, is there anything in particular that you've done this year that you did to make on the Um, I think if we go about making an app next time, I just think we need to map out our plan and have some deadlines because we kind of cut it close on a few things, but I think if you have a set plan, it's easier to finish it and give yourself some time. Right. Yeah. Um, what about the life cycle team? Yeah, so we had a really good plan. Uh, we had like this full design, but we we really cut it close. So, so next time, like trying to reinforce, like doing stuff a little earlier, uh, procrastinating, all of that. <laughs> 
And so, and what about the weak neck tea? What was the question again? Sorry, we couldn't hear it. Sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The question was, what would you do differently if you had the chance to work on a new app? Um, I guess. Oh, oh sorry. You can go through. Oh. Okay. Um, I was gonna say maybe definitely start it a bit earlier. We in about maybe August ish September, so so that was kind of close. But um, I think starting it earlier, having more time to brainstorm, and definitely creating a plan. Yeah. And I would say time management is going to be crucial because senioritis is very real. <laughs> very real. Trust me. Oh, well, um, moving on. Do we have any final questions? Any questions? All the children, you have a question? <laughs> No more questions? Okay, great. Open your hands, Hello. I wanted to know um, from start to finish, how many hours do you estimate it took to finish, to complete your project? How many, how much time did you spend working on it collectively? I'm not sure the exact amount of hours, but it probably took a few months. So in actuality, the programming, I'd say probably like maybe 40 hours. Okay. Um, for the WeConnect team, how many hours it took? I'm um, I'm not sure exactly uh, how many hours. I would say, I mean, the development process was like over two months, but like it was sort of on and off. Um, I'm like sure you know, obviously, I actually what I had previously competed um, in my freshman year, um, and I was a winner in 2019, I think it was. Um, so I know that like the development process can be either very short or very long so it you we can say our responses but based on the idea it will be very different so thank you and for the life cycle team uh so like to estimate maybe around like five hours for like getting the idea and then like designing it like the entire app to make it look good that's like 10 to 15 and then to actually program that's like yeah, on and off for like a couple of months. So like 40 to 50 hours. And then for the actual video, maybe 10 hours or so. So like, I don't know, around 90-ish hours in total. <laughs> That's not a lot. And it also depends on like how big your app is. So like you don't want your app to be too big or else you're just going to spend like all your time on that. So like make sure to focus on one thing and do good on that. Any final questions before we take any flat over there? My question is, how did you feel when you won? <laughs> yeah, sorry, the cyber adventure. So I remember it was really funny because I got a text from this rant, or I got an email, and it was from this random person, and it was like, we'd like to talk to you about the app. But they didn't mention Michael in the email, so I got concerned. But I remember I met him at the end of the school day, and I was like, hey, they want to call us. Later that night, they were like, you won. And I was just sitting in my room, and I was like, this is big. Because my mom was in the other room, like, trying not to snoop in on me, so... Fun. What about the life cycle team? Uh, well, for me specifically, like I think I was at my friend's house and then like I got this email and it was like mm, congressional app challenge. So like I wasn't really sure if I wanted to open that email and ruin my day. <laughs> but then I saw that I won. So I was like, oh, that's great. And then like once I came home, I told all my family and then it was, it was great. Felt really great. What about the week next team? I was going to say, so we actually didn't know we won for a very long time. And it was said, I remember getting an email saying that, oh, all the results for the Congressional App Challenge winners came out. And we were like, oh, oh OK, we probably didn't get it. And then I remember a week, a week later, he texted me and he was all like, guess what? We won. And I was like, wait, what? No way. So, yeah, that's how ours won. 
Well, congratulations to you all, and thank you so much for your innovation. So, oh, sorry. Um, any last question? Yes, uh, a fantastic venue uh, from hearing the, about all the different apps that have been presented. I'm just curious if the U.S. Uh, PTO uh, will incentivize next year, because you have a lot of young ladies and gentlemen here who probably are thinking about writing apps. How will you encourage them to do it for next year? Um, so this is a perfect question for our director of education. We're going to invite at this time. So thank you all so much for listening. Thank you so much. Um, before I, well, I'll take the question and then I will thank our guest. So just in terms of incentivizing students um, to uh, participate in the Congressional App Challenge, the USPTO certainly is happy to uh, work with the Congressional App Challenge competition itself to provide workshops. Before COVID, we would do workshops here at the USPTO for apps and intellectual property because there are lots of trademarks and patents and trade secrets and copyright involved in the creation of an app, regardless of how you decide to share it with people, whether you decide you want to give it away or you just want to make sure that someone doesn't replicate your site and put up information that is not from you. So intellectual property definitely comes into play. So to answer that question of how we plan to incentivize, we will continue to encourage people to enter the Congressional App Challenge. We'll continue to do workshops designed to help students think about coding, to introduce students to programs such as Scratch. Um, in fact, on August, the last uh, Tuesday in August of this month, which I believe is the 30th, someone hopefully can, can correct me, good, all right, from 6 to 7.30, um, we have our monthly webinar. And the August webinar is actually focused on the Congressional App Challenge. And so it'll give audiences an opportunity to take a deeper dive if they want to learn more about how you enter the competition, what information do you need to think about or what do you need to consider, um, and hopefully walk people through how to actually do that process. So um, that is the incentive that we have thus far. I don't know. I'm trying to think. We can give away inventor trading cards. <laughs> and we're also very open to, um, to stakeholders to let us know how we can better incentivize or help students or parents think about how they can incentivize or get more students engaged in coding and STEM and, and learning more about intellectual property. So thank you very much for the question. <laughs> And so I want to definitely thank our wonderful panelists, um, Varun um, Srivashu and uh, Sharia um, on screen. And I know I butchered your names. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, in addition, I want to thank um, Reagan and Michael and Ram and Ramya. Uh, for their participation um, today. And a big thank you to Elvisa um, for moderating the panel this afternoon. So again, we're very glad to have all of you here. Uh, we are going to have a brief film, or I should say a short video that is shown. It is on one of the partner organizations that USPTO works with. If you came into the building um, through the through the Madison side of the building, or I should say through the Delaney side of the building, you would have saw on your right the National Inventors Hall of Fame. It is an organization that has partnered with the USPTO. Actually, it was founded by the USPTO back in 1973. And over the years, that organization has developed youth um, summer camps called Camp Invention, which are designed as a way to encourage and inspire students, all students, to think about invention and inventing. And they do it by modeling and showing you different inventors who have been able to achieve amazing things. But the other key, I think, to that program is that that inventor is in all of us. That creator is in all of us. And so programs like Camp Invention that focus on invention education really 
are geared towards getting more of us, more students, more people thinking about how they take the ideas in their head and turn them into something tangible, like these young people have done here today and the ones that have joined us uh, virtually. And you're going to hear later on this afternoon from other young inventors, such as Christiana Alexander, who have been able to take those ideas and translate them into something tangible. So again, thank you for being here this afternoon um, or this morning, depending on where you are. And thank you so much for giving us your time and attention. So we're going to start the video, I believe, for the Camp Invention program. <laughs> 